Hey chums, OD here, and in this episode, we'll be talking about the Alpha Timeline, the anchor that keeps Homestuck's sprawling narrative grounded in a single, continuous plot. In Homestuck, reality unfolds based on a few basic rules, and the Alpha Timeline is entirely the product of these rules. There are at least four main rules ruling the story of Homestuck, so let's break them down here. The first rule is the principle inscribed on the twin Ouroboros amulet in the never-ending story, Auron. Do as you will. In Paradox Space, every single character will do as they will, and sooner or later, everyone always gets what they want. This may turn out to be a monkey's paw situation where their wish is granted in a horrible way, or they may get what they want only to realize it wasn't all it was cracked up to be. But in either case, the player will most likely just move on to a new wish, unless it ends so catastrophically as to cause their death. Even then, players may find their wishes granted in the afterlife. The only thing that can truly stop an individual's will from getting them what they want is the interfering will of another. However, this is always temporary. Any attempts to subvert or undermine the wills of other people will inevitably produce some sort of karmic backlash, as those wills eventually reassert themselves or fulfill a wish for freedom or vengeance against the aggressor. In some cases, this karmic whiplash effect can echo across multiple lifetimes, creating cycles of revenge and mutual suffering that can go on for eternity. In others, eventual comeuppance could be put off for thousands, millions of years or more. Still, it's always a matter of time. The second rule is circumstantial simultaneity, which seems to be based on Carl Jung's idea of synchronicity. Jung supposed that events are meaningful coincidences if they occur with no causal relationship, yet seem to be meaningfully related. He also described this as a-causal parallelism, or parallel imagery. Homestuck takes this rather literally. We're told that there is essentially nothing new in paradox space. Instead, everything that ever happens is either a visual or substantive reproduction of something which has already transpired on a timeline, offshoot or otherwise. On one level, this is a way for the comic to justify its all but constant self-referencing and recurring mimetic imagery. On another, it's a way for the comic to structure its sprawling narrative in a way that's easier to parse or remember for the reader. Recognition makes it easier to draw symbolic links between otherwise disconnected events through an understanding that they are all versions of the same event. The third rule is what I'll call universal self-containment. Time, like the other aspects, is just another fundamental particle of any given universe that can be manipulated by thought. Any particular universe or pocket universe has its own distinct time flow. From an outside perspective, time is simply a number of points to choose from, and as a result, agents in one universe looking into another will have access to the other's complete timeline all at once, provided they have the right technology. The final rule is that of internal coherence. Whenever a time loop is created, the timeline can only be allowed to continue existing if it remains internally coherent by following the loop through. There are only two forms of time travel as a result. The first is if there are smaller loops contained within the larger loop. A time player or someone who has access to time technology can time travel as much as they want, so long as they make sure the actions they take comply with the structure the alpha timeline has already dictated. This is a difficult balance to navigate, and the stakes are high. Time traveling to change the past in arbitrary ways that deviate from the loop will break the timeline. A player who doesn't time travel but somehow makes a choice that deviates from the loop will also break the timeline, and in both cases, a broken timeline is immediately marked as doomed. Doomed timelines can't communicate with other universes. A doomed timeline immediately starts falling apart. While there are a few ways for players to escape doomed timelines, and some cases where doomed timelines provide vital influence to the alpha timeline, every player in such timelines is marked for death even if they escape into the Alpha. Once every player in a Doom timeline is gone, dead, or asleep, well, game over. The timeline fades out of existence, and reality simply continues on in the Alpha. The distress the Alpha timeline puts on the cast is a core theme of Homestuck from page 1. To hear Andrew Hussey describe it, Homestuck is a story that is also a game. In games, characters die all the time. How many times did you let Mario fall into the pit before he saved the princess? 
Who weeps for these Marios? In games, your characters die, but you keep trying and trying and rebooting and resetting until finally they make it. When you play a game, this process is all very impersonal. Once you finally win, when all is said and done, those deaths didn't count. Only the linear path of the final victorious version of the character is considered real. Mario never actually died, did he? Except the omniscient player knows better. Homestuck seems to combine all the meaningless deaths of a trial and error game journey with the way death is treated dramatically in other media, where unlike our oblivious Mario, the characters are aware and afraid of the many deaths they must experience before finally winning the game. You might have noticed this presents a paradox, however. If the characters generally don't like being bound to the alpha timeline, and yet they cannot escape it, then how is it possible that everyone in Paradox Space eventually gets what they want? And the answer is that the alpha timeline, and accordingly, the entire story of Homestuck, exists to describe one massive, continuous timeline. One that spans literal millennia and at least four distinct universes. The cast is bound to this loop, stuck if you will, because it revolves around their entanglement with the primary antagonist of Homestuck, an indestructible time-traveling demon known as Lord English. While profoundly evil, cruel, and violent, L.E. is also responsible for the existence of the entire cast of Homestuck, as well as their home worlds and everything about their reality. In other words, L.E. is the god of our hero's reality, who the story explicitly marks as a Yaldabaoth, an arrogant, flawed creator god. A blind god who cannot perceive the light of ideas, values only the physical, and proclaims himself the sole ruler of all creation. In actuality, Homestuck is not about Spurb or Trolls or even our heroes in particular, but rather about how our hero's journey through the Alpha timeline eventually, inevitably culminates in the creation of Lord English himself. Since creating Lord English is a prerequisite to their own creations, failure to do so would subject the cast to a grandfather paradox, breaking the rule of internal coherence and immediately creating a doomed timeline. So the Alpha timeline is not an arbitrary flaw in the comic's rules, but rather an oppressive structure imposed onto the characters through Lord English's will, a consequence of his inherently flawed act of creation. Who Lord English is and how he gains and exploits this unfathomable power is a mystery we'll explore further as we continue this series. Luckily for our heroes, Homestuck also happens to show us how they transcend and ultimately overcome the unjust prison they're subjected to, as they learn to find comfort and power through understanding each other and themselves, and we'll be learning more about that too. I hope you found this interesting and that you've come away with a better understanding of Homestuck's main conflict and the stakes it involves. This video exists thanks to the support of my wise cohort of patrons. If you'd like to summon more videos like this onto your screen, then you can join them. Also make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you never miss another video. That's all for now. Until next time, keep rising.